Good evening. We pray God's blessing upon you as you worship with us tonight. Um, it feels like spring or summer. <laughs> yes, I think it's a woo. -woo. Um, of course, it's momentary, but that's okay. We'll take what we have in the present. Um, just a few announcements. We hope that you'll be able to take and read through the bulletin because there are lots of announcements, lots of things going on. Uh, first, we continue to pray for Terry and Kim Cochran. Um, Terry is, he's got good days and he's got some not so good days. So, but they are um, up at, uh, in Milwaukee and um, we are sending cards to him and you can just drop them off in the basket and Kim's dad comes and picks them up every week and so he has been loving the cards. So uh, if you can keep doing that, that's great. As COVID numbers are improving, please take care to keep diligent. We want to just say, whoo, away with the masks. Not yet. And um, our council talked about it at our meeting on Thursday and thought, let's get through Easter wearing masks. And so then, depending on how the numbers are, the weekend after Easter, we will see if, if masks are optional. So we're gonna keep hanging in there. Please keep diligent. On Wednesday, we're having our midweek Lenten services at 12.15 and 6.30 p.m. And um, since we can't do our soup suppers, we invite you to bring a can of soup and um, then we will donate those to the Outreach Center, to Shalom Center, and to Grace Welcome Center. Next week, we will have our noisy offering, and the money is going to be going to God's Kitchen, which is run by Arnetta Griffin, and she does great work. Trumper High School is having a blood drive uh, this Thursday, March 10th, Unfortunately, they, they sent the email too late for Olga to get it into the bulletin. So I'm sure that on the Tremper website, if you are interested in giving, that would be great. Any other announcements? Olga. The Lutheran World Relief thing about the Ukraine? Y yes. The insert in the bulletin? Yes. So there is an insert about, the, about Ukraine and Lutheran World Relief, so we hope that you'll be able to take a look at that. Anything else? Then let us uh, please stand for confession and forgiveness. In the name of God, who makes a way in the wilderness, walks with us, and guides us in our pilgrimage. Amen. Holy One, we confess that we have wandered far from you. We have not trusted your promises. We have ignored your prophets in our own day. We have squandered our inheritance of grace. We have failed to recognize you in our midst. Have mercy on us. Forgive us and turn us again to you. Teach us to follow in your ways. Assure us again of your love and help us to love our neighbor. Amen. Beloved in Christ, the word draws near to you, and all who call out, call out to God shall be saved. In Jesus, God comes to you again and again and gathers you under the wings of love. In Jesus' name, your sins are forgiven. God journeys with you and teaches you how to live in love. Amen. Let us sing together the gathering hymn, uh, O oh God, Forgive Us.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh Lord God, you led your people through the wilderness and brought them to the promised land. Guide us now so that following your Son, we may walk safely through the wilderness of this world toward the life you alone can give. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion. Blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only, I have sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me, yet you desired faithfulness even in the womb. You taught me wisdom in that secret place. Cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sin and blot out all my inequity. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks for being here. beginning with the first verse. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear Jesus. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, this man welcomes sinners and he eats with them? Then Jesus told him this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the 99 in the open country? and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. And then he calls his friends and his neighbors together and he says, rejoice with me, I have found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people who do not need to repent. Or suppose a woman has 10 silver coins and loses one. Doesn't she light a lamp, sweep the house, and search very carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, rejoice with me, I have found my lost coin. 
In the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Let us pray. Prepare our hearts, Lord, to receive your word. Silence in us any voice but your own, so that by hearing we may believe and by believing we may obey your will. Reveal to us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. When COVID first started, I thought, uh, you know, we were all feeling at such a loss. And I thought, what can I do as a pastor here to reach out to people? And I thought, you know, there were different pastors that were doing um, videos of themselves. And I thought, I don't want to see a video of myself. Sorry. <laughs> but then I thought, OK, our greatest gift that we have is the gift of prayer. And so I thought, I want to do prayers. And I always kind of like it if there's a nice scene on there. And so I thought, I will put my pictures and prayers together. And thankfully, I have a son who's really good with Photoshop. And so he told me how to do things, which I'm very thankful for. And then other people have have sent me pictures, and that's been wonderful. I love the prayers that I have found, and some real gems, like I never knew about the New Zealand prayer book, which has amazing, amazing prayers. It's kind of like the Book of Common Prayer for Episcopalians or Anglicans. It's New Zealand's. So I thought for Lent, I wanted to do prayers because that is our greatest gift that we have. And I thought I wanted to do, um, you know, something that you can take home. And so I thought, why not do a little, so if you get this little prayer in your bulletin, and I hope like your star words, you take it home and put it in a place that that you might see it. Um, I think, you can put it on the fridge. You could use it as a bookmark. You could stick it on a bulletin board someplace. And then each week on the weekends, we will have uh, these different prayers. And I hope it's on cardstock. And then on the back is the Lenten schedule, just so you don't forget. But I, I love some of these, well, I love all the prayers that we, that I picked. I did pick, sorry. <laughs> um, but the first one is Psalm 51. And what's the backstory of Psalm 51? It all started with a parable, a story. You see, once there were, in a certain city, there were two men. One was very rich and very powerful, and he had a lot of flocks of sheep and cattle. And then there was another, and he was very poor. And in fact, all he had was one little ewe. But he loved that little lamb more than anything else. And he would feed the lamb at the table from his meager offerings. And the lamb would, would sleep in the house with him, and that lamb meant everything to him. Well, one day a traveler came to the rich man's house, and so, of course, the rich man had to prepare a feast. And he thought, I don't want to use any of my own cattle. So he went over to this poor man, and he took the one sheep, that one loved sheep killed it 
and prepared a feast for the traveler. That was the story that Nathan, the prophet Nathan, went and told King David. Now, when King David heard that, he was just so angry. He thought, how in the world can that rich man do something like that? That poor man who lost his only sheep. And then Nathan said, you're the man. You're the one. Because you remember that story. King David, who was the mightiest king of Israel, sent his troops off to battle, and including his good friend Uriah. And so his troops were, were fighting, and King David stayed back. And one day, he was out on his balcony, and he looked over, and he saw Bathsheba, who was on her rooftop. And he thought, I want her. Go get her. You can't refuse the king. So she had absolutely no say in this. She was brought to him, and he impregnated her. Now, King David is thinking, all right, she's pregnant. Her husband is off at war, and how am I going to cover this up? So he sent for Uriah to come home, and he thought he can come home, and he can be with his wife, and then they'll think it's his child. The only problem is he didn't count on the fact that Uriah was so loyal to his king that he thought, if I am being brought back from the battle and the people that I am fighting with aren't able to go home to their families and their wives, I won't. And now David's really in trouble because he's thinking, all right, here's this loyal soldier of mine. And so he wrote a letter instructing Uriah's commander to put him in the front lines of the battle and then draw back when the battle got tough so that he would be the only one up there and be killed. Uriah was faithful, and he took that letter, never opened it, gave it to his commanding officer. They put him in the thick of the battle. They withdrew, and Uriah was killed. And King David breathed a sigh of relief. He was king after all. And it was about a year later that God sent the prophet Nathan to him. Can you imagine how frightening it would be for Nathan to go to the king of Israel and try and confront him in his sins? Not only did he commit adultery, but murder. And so he told him that story And it is thought that David, King David, wrote Psalm 51. When he realized his sin and he got on his knees and said, I have sinned against the Lord. I never knew the Episcopalians did um, private confession. But, it, but, you know, Lutherans can do private confession too. We just don't have confessionals and neither do the Episcopalians have confessionals. But the Reverend Brandon Duke, before he got ordained, wanted to do a private confession. The only thing was, he said, I really felt kind of weird because I was going to be confessing my sins to my priest, who I know well. I've had lunch with her. We've prayed together. We've worshiped together. And he said, I was so nervous about doing that but he felt like he needed to confess. He said, I still remember exactly what side chapel we were in, how the candles were lit, where she sat and I knelt. And he said, and I confessed to all the things that God already knew, but things about me that I don't know she knew. 
He said she could tell that I was nervous in doing so. And that when I finished and she gave absolution, she had me stand up and she put her hands on my shoulders and said, Brandon, you're going to make a good priest. But go and take Psalm 51 and read it and pray it at the altar. He said, when I read this prayer, I felt the weight lift off me. I felt the joy of God's redeeming spirit within me. This is a great prayer for every day. I have to say, to hear those words, especially, and I saw the smile on, on Heather's face, create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence. Do you remember these words? And how many of you hear music? Do you hear music when, you know, okay, we've got some young ones here. <laughs> I think it's anybody under 40. <laughs> so you probably don't remember this. But Maggie, I think we should sing this. Well, yeah. takes me back to as a little kid sitting in the pew. And do you remember where we did this in the service? The offertory. And at first I, you know, in thinking about it, I'm thinking, well, what, why would we do that there? And yet doesn't that make all the sense? God doesn't want just our money, but God wants all of us, knowing that we don't have it all together, knowing that we sin and need a clean heart and to calm our fears that we won't be cast away. May you pray, Psalm 51, may you hear those words of create in me a clean heart, O God. May you be filled with his joy this day. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let us sing the hymn after the sermon.
stand as you are able as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We pray, Lord, have mercy on us. Blot out our transgressions. Create in us a clean heart, O God. Restore to us the joy of your salvation and sustain us in a willing spirit. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the people of Ukraine and the people of Russia for their countries and their leaders. We cry out to you for the beginnings of this war now occurring in Ukraine. We long for you to stop this violence and destruction, to bring this war to a just end, and for your protection for all innocent victims and everyone directly involved in military action in Ukraine and in Russia. Lord, in your mercy. Be with the leaders of this nation and in this world that they follow your will. Guide them, grant them wisdom and courage. Be with those who serve in our military. Guide them, guard them, and lead them into all peace. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those in need. Rescue those experiencing mental illness or contending with addiction. Ease the anxiety of those who live with dementia. Command your angels concerning all who are sick, especially Terry, Susie, Ted, Karen, Susan, Margaret, Diana, Furness, Ben, Laura, Caroline, Howard, Janet, Jerry, Chris, Sue, and Woody, and those we name before you either out loud or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, all these things and whatever else you see that we need, grant it for the sake of him who died and rose again, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated as we continue with communion. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me, the body of Christ given for you. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me, the blood of Christ shed for you. For as often as we eat this bread and drink from this cup, we are reminded that Christ is present, who comes to us with love, forgiveness, and we pray creates in us clean hearts, let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 
May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing so that we may abound in hope by the power of through the Holy Spirit, through Christ Jesus, for whom we wait. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us sing the final hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Peace, Jesus meets you on the way. Thanks be to God.